Shalom and welcome to Biblical Faith with Sam Peek. We invite you to join us as Sam brings a study in the Torah from the Jewish sages. And now our speaker, Sam Peek. Shalom Aleichem. Peace upon you. Welcome to our program, Biblical Faith. Uh, we got a lot of ground to cover today. We are still in the series looking at Aleph Tav, or from Aleph to Tav, or Aleph Beit, however we want to call it, the Hebrew alphabet. That's, that's the whole point. We have already seen a whole lot just in the introduction that we have been doing, I think, in the last three programs. I think this one will be number four. Uh, and we want to get on to the letters. But we want to still establish a, a few things left. Let's go back over here to the board, pick up where we left off in the last program, because there are some uh, interesting things yet to talk about. We looked at Betzalel, and this is how we actually even started this whole thing, that Betzalel, God put into him the knowledge of how to combine the letters with which God created the heavens and the earth. So Bet Betzalel had, uh, had the, the wisdom and the understanding, understanding of the letters. Then, and he built, what did he build? He built the Mishkan. He built the Mishkan, the tabernacle. And the Mishkan, we look at how, we looked and, and saw how to, to build God's abode upon the earth, either in the tabernacle or in the temple, is tantamount or it's similar to, it's like how God created the universe. It's giving us a revelation of that as well as a revelation of God himself. Uh, and God is living in it just as he lives within the universe. So the people who did it had to have an understanding of how God created the universe. And how did he create it? With the letters, the letters of the Aleph Tav, of the Aleph Beit. Okay? Then we, we saw the same was true of Solomon, who built the first temple. And what does Solomon, <laughs> we all know Solomon is one thing, don't we? And more than anything else, the wisest man of all, of wisdom. And we looked at that, uh, now this is on a Midrash, now on the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs 30 and verse 1. We mentioned it in the last program. I want to mention it again because it says the words of the man, words of the man, Solomon, upon whom the Holy Spirit rested, then it uses a very interesting term, and I'll put it in English. It says, Le'it, uh, Le'iti, Le'iti El, which the rabbis take this Le'iti El to be Otiot. It's the same letters, by the way, in Hebrew. And I know it doesn't look the same letters in English. It's not, but in Hebrew it is. Otiot, and Otiot means le the letters. The letters, and this goes on, of God, uh, upon whom, whom the Holy Spirit rested, the one who understood the letters of God. Now, that's very interesting that Solomon is called that because Solomon builds what? <coughs> Excuse me. He builds the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple. Beit HaMikdash uh, HaRishon. The first, okay? That temple is destroyed. Then we come to Ezra. Now, what do we know about Ezra? Ezra is a sofer. A sofer is a scribe. I'm, I'm obviously not a scribe, but a sofer is a scribe. And what does a scribe do? He has all the knowledge of the letters. And what do we know about Ezra? Ezra is instrumental. Ezra is instrumental in several things. Let me read a few of them. He is very much instrumental in, in the rebuilding of the second temple. Uh, he distinguished himself by teaching a new dimension of the Torah to the people. Uh, we need to see, see that. We would have to go back into Ezra and look at that. But he is, he is giving us new stuff from the Torah. According to some versions or some, some of the accounts in the Talmud, he introduced or reintroduced, really, he reintroduced Israel to the sacred script in which the Torah was originally given, the Ketav Ashurit. Now, many people this is, think this is the script from Assyria. I disagree with this. Uh, the Talmud, I think we can reconcile that. We may do that eventually in a program. 
but a lot of people think that uh, God wrote very primitively originally, and then, and then we have to go to the Assyrians to get a nice script to write the biblical text. I don't think that's the case at all. I think God wrote very nice to begin with, that the Jewish people became undeserving of this script and we lost it. And the scribe Ezra comes and reintroduces us to it. The script of Asherit, not meaning the script of Assyria. I'm mentioning this because I know some of you are already going to write me about it. The script, not, not being the script of Assyria, but Ashur of beautiful, a beautiful script. Okay? Okay. Uh, and he builds the bait the Beit Hamikdash, uh, Hashini, the second temple. Now, obviously, every one of these persons, wisdom, understanding, wisdom, the letters, 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 wisdom, understanding of the letters and of how God used the letters of the Aleph Beit to create the universe. What does that suggest to us? What it suggests is that the people, or maybe the person, who will be the main mover in building the third temple as far as, I say the main mover, uh, uh, in, a, in a position like these people, like Bezalel, who was the number one designer, like Solomon, who was the king and who pushed everything, and, and David is also included in that because he made all the plans, you know, of really of the temple. Like Ezra, who also was is a, a leader in this. At least the leaders on the third temple must have an understanding, wisdom and understanding and a godly spirit from God of ha'otiot, the letters shalel of God, the letters of God. They must have an understanding of this. So some of the things we're studying, very, very important. At least I think so. Okay? Uh, wow. You know, we could go on uh, in, in this area for a long time, let me just just give me just one moment to look through these because I, I, I honestly thought that I wouldn't get carried away and get into other areas. Uh, I would really like to cover some of this, but I want to go on with the idea of what we are doing. And I want to go now from Rabbi Nelson Sherman. I want to go to Rabbi Michael Monk. You remember? We need to give, we need to once again give credit where credit's due. We have been looking at uh, an article that uh, Rabbi Sherman, Rabbi Nelson Sherman, a very, very great rabbi, uh, a very good rabbi who's, who's uh, connected, I think now he's very much uh, with the Arts Grow Masora Publishing Company, and uh, he writes lots of commentaries. He's very good. Now we want to go to Rabbi Michael Monk, who wrote a book called uh, The Wisdom of the Hebrew Alphabet. And we want to look and notice a few things that he says about the entire Hebrew alphabet, and then hopefully... Uh, God, with God willing and with his help, we will begin in the next program with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay? Well, I take that, I have to take all that back <laughs> because I know what Rabbi Monk is going to give to us. He is going to give to us a beautiful passage in the Talmud uh, that describes the whole alphabet, and we will put that on the board and, and do that first in this program and probably in the next. And then we will go to the individual letters. Okay? All right. Uh, the first thing that Rabbi Monk wants to make sure that we get is that, uh, number one, Aleph Tav, he wants to give to us and share with us some of the things that the Aleph Tav tell us, okay? Let's go back here for just a moment. Let me erase some of this. As long as it doesn't get in my throat and make me cough, we're in good shape. Okay. Number one, he wants to tell us about about several things that Aleph Tav stand for, what they suggest to us. And the very first thing is completion. Completion. Because the Aleph Tav, wait a minute, excuse me, the Aleph Tav is complete. It stands for that. If we're going to say that we're going to completely cover a subject, and we've already talked about this, we would say, from Aleph to the Tav, we will cover everything. Okay? Uh, he says, since the very order of the letters represents profound halakhic and philosophical concepts, this expression is not parallel to from A to Z. Uh, for example, 
Although the patriarch Avraham died 325 years before the Torah was revealed and received at Sinai, nevertheless, the Talmud tells us, the oral Torah tells us, that Avraham observed the Torah from Aleph to Tav. Interesting, huh? In addition to its obvious meaning that Abraham observed the commandments before they were revealed to Israel as a nation, this statement implies that the patriarch Avraham, that he embodied... That's, I think that's what it means more than anything, that he embodied and he exemplified in his life all of the attributes and the holy characteristics that are implicit in the, le- excuse me, in the letters of the Aleph Bey. In other words, what? Avraham is a walking Torah. It's in him. It's part of him. It's part of who he is. The great, wonderful, beautiful uh, revelation of the Torah given at Mount Sinai to Israel later on. Uh, is inside of Avraham. It's part of who he is. He says, he goes on to tell us the use of an alphabetical, okay, there are many places in the Bible, in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Older Testament, uh, that use an alphabetical acrostic. In other words, they, they are done in alphabetical order according to the Hebrew language. One of these is Psalm 112. Uh, which talks about it begins, praiseworthy is the man. Uh, it's written completely with an alphabetic acrostic. Did you know the Talmud identifies who is this man? Who is this person? It's Abraham. And Abraham is described from Aleph, the very first letter, because it goes in alphabetical order, to Tav, the very last letter. So he is complete. Okay? In the same way, the matriarch Sarah, Sarah, she is the subject of, uh, I, I know most of you, uh, most of the audience is Christian. You may or may not be familiar with this song. But on the Shabbat, on Friday night, on the Shabbat, a husband, uh, if he's really observant, will sing a song. Uh, if he can't sing, he'll just say the words uh, to his wife that's called Eshet Chayil. Eshet Chayil, the woman of, of life, of success, of valor. Uh, if you will, or the accomplished woman of accomplishments. The matriarch Sarah, and this is written, by the way, from Aleph to Tav. It's written in alphabetical sequence. Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalit, A, B, C, D. Uh, the verses are. And it's about the matriarch, or the, our, uh, our mother, Sarah. Uh, and it's complete. That's, that was my point. It's complete. Okay? Well, he mentioned so many things that I would like to get into, but I'm, I'm really wanting to go on, and we will have to come back to this because we're going to tie so many things together. It will be very nice. Uh, he's going through all of the different alphabetical acrostics that are used uh, in, the, uh, in the written Tanakh. Here's one maybe we should, we should mention. Yes, okay, here's another one that we should mention. Alphabetic acrostics, he says, are also used to symbolize the totality of destruction and transgression. Look, he's, he's talking about this Aleph to Tav being complete, giving it to us complete information about something. Abraham is complete, and we have a description of him in Psalm 112. Aleph to Tav in alphabetical order. Uh, Sarah is a complete person, and we have a description of her in Proverbs, uh, what is it, Proverbs 31? Yeah, Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31, the Eshet Chayil, the accomplished woman. So we have an alphabetical description because she is complete. But we also have other things in the Tanakh that are complete and that are described from Aleph to Tav, from A to, or from, from uh, A, B, C, D, okay? Uh, this one is in the book of, in uh, Hebrew, Echa. Lamentations, the Lamentations of Jeremiah the Prophet. It contains a series of lamentations with the initials of the verses following the 22 letters of the Aleph Bait. Why does it do that? Complete. Echa, what is it about? It's the lamentations of the Jewish people for the land of Israel, for the Jewish people, for the city of Jerusalem, for the Temple Mount, and the destruction that went on there. Why? Why the 22 letters? Rabbi Monk says to indicate that God's full fury, complete fury, was unleashed against the people of Israel because, and he, by the way, he is quoting from the Talmud here in Sanhedrin 104a, because they transgressed the Torah which was given them with the 22 letters. 
So because they transgressed the Torah, which was given them with the 22 letters, God poured out full 22 letter fury upon them. Wow. But he says there is consolation amidst, even amid a tragedy. Although the temple has not been rebuilt, the Torah symbolizing the completion and perfection of the full Aleph Beit remains the legacy of Israel. In other words, we still have as our inheritance, the Jewish people, the Torah. God did not take the Torah from us. He did not take the 22 letters from us. We still have it, even though the temple is destroyed. Uh, okay. He makes beautiful points here because we have completeness also in what is called, let's, let's go back to the board. We have complete, we looked at, uh, let's see, what have we looked at? We've looked at completion, how Abraham was complete. Psalm 112. I can tell already we're probably going to have about another couple of programs in this introduction. How Sarah, Sarah is complete. Proverbs 31. Let me find another piece here. Proverbs 31. Uh, what did I say? No, I've lost my place. Hold on. I think it was 10 through 31. Yeah. Eishet Chayu, 10 through 31. Then we looked at the Echa. Uh, Lamentations, the book of Lamentations, talking about, uh, it, it also is complete. I mean, uh, it, uh, talking about the fury of God, the wrath of God that was poured out upon Israel for abandoning, for not, for not taking to heart the, 20, the Torah, which is written with the 22 letters. Now, he tells us, and, and all of these are written, by the way, Aleph to Tav. Okay, that's important what we're, what we're getting. Uh, now he goes to, uh, to uh, confession. Confession. And did you know when we confess to God, it's called a vidui. It is a, it is a particular poem that is in the, in the Siddur. And it is written from Aleph to Tav. So it is complete too. Uh, basically what Rabbi Monk is doing is he is going through all the different things that uh, the Aleph to Tav theme is carried in the, in the scriptures uh, and in the Siddur and in Jewish tradition and in the Oral Torah. And all of those things are complete things. Let's, let's one more. Uh, man glorifies, he says, the divine creator and provider by expressing his praise in an acrostic of the Aleph Beit. What is he talking about? He's talking about uh, uh, the Psalms. Yes, the Psalms. Uh, this is alluded to, oh, 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 wow. Now I have to show you this. He says, every time we say Baruch Atah, speaking to God, Baruch Atah, okay? Let's write this in Hebrew. Uh, every time we say it, okay? Baruch Guess what? He comes here and he finds, you remember the et over here? He comes here and finds the et in atah, you, in atah. And he says, uh, he says, it is alluded to that we praise God with all of the letters uh, because the two letters, Aleph and Tav of the word atah, indicate the entire range of the holy letters. Oh, by the way, he says the hay is also important, this, this letter, because a hay is five. And he says uh, it is the, the letter five, and he, it denotes the five organs of verbal articulation. The larynx, the palate, the tongue, the teeth, and the lips. Isn't that amazing what they find in these things? It's absolutely amazing to me. Uh, he goes on and he's pointing out all the different, the different places where we have alphabetical arrangement, like King David's Psalm 145. Now, in case you misunderstand, let's look at this, because I'm going to mention Psalm 145 because Jews say this very often, at least a couple of times a day, uh, three times, actually three times daily, morning, uh, afternoon, and evening. <coughs> Excuse me. Concerning that, the sages make a very interesting statement in the Talmud, and it's in Barakot 4b, if you have a Talmud. The sages state, he who recites this psalm three times daily is assured of a place in the world to come. Now, dear Christian, let me help you, okay? 
because you'll come to this if you're if you're beginning to study some things in the Talmud or something or in the oral tradition, you'll come to this and say, how can they say that? What, who do those rabbis think they are? How can they say such a thing? That means if I say this psalm three times a day, I'm assured salvation. I'm assured a place in heaven. I'm assured a place in the world to come. You've missed the point of what they're saying. If you think that they are just talking about the physical saying of this, because anyone, anyone, the idea is this, anyone who actually says this psalm, which praises God from Aleph to Tav, Psalm 145, they actually say this three times a day, and they are paying attention to what they're saying, and they take the psalm to heart. The Word of God, the Aleph to Tav, works on them. It plants itself within their heart, and they are believers. They are, they, they, this is what assures them of a place in the world to come. This is what saves them, is the Word of God. Pow! Uh, this, it's the same idea when we read the Torah in the synagogue on Shabbat, the final blessing after we read the Torah. Uh, blessed are you, Hashem, who implants eternal life within us. Well, how did God implant eternal life within us? He does it through the Word. He does it through His Word, through the Torah, through the Aleph Tav the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. He puts his word into us, and this puts inter eternal life within us. The rabbis are saying the same thing here. I, I get a little wore out uh, from time to time with people who don't use their brains. And I, now that's not meant to fire you up at me, but, but sometimes I get, uh, you know, really hot letters against Jews and against Judaism, against the oral Torah, against all kinds of things because somebody gets in there and reads a statement like this. He who recites this psalm three times daily is assured of a place in the world to come. And they think those, those crazy rabbis are saying that all I've got to do is say this psalm three times a day. And, and wow, I, that, that's what really saves me. That's what assures me a place in heaven. That's not what the rabbis are saying. They're saying if you recite this psalm three times a day and take it to its heart, in other words, it's going to have an effect on you. You're going to believe God. You're going to come into a relationship with Him if you were to do something like that. Because the Word of God is powerful. It is the only power, really. I think that's what we are beginning to see in this study on the Aleph Tav. Uh, Okay, let's run on because uh, uh, first he talks about how, uh, Rabbi Monk talks about how the Aleph Beit, uh, the Aleph Tav is complete. His first idea is completion. Then he begins to talk about um, uh, the Aleph Tav and power, the power of the Aleph Tav. Well, uh, let's we'll, we'll end this program with a very with a couple of very interesting stories from the oral tradition, from the oral Torah, uh, that are that are very very illustrative of the power that is contained in the Aleph Bay. Rabbi Yitzhak Luria. Now, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria was a Kabbalistic rabbi of several centuries ago. He was called the Holy Arizal. And he, the story is told that he once felt that his prayers during the days of all between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, were, they were really getting through. I mean, he had really made a connection with God. But then the Holy Spirit revealed to him that the prayers of someone else were even more pleasing to God than those of the Arizal. So, I mean, God told him this. The Holy Spirit shows him this, the Ruach HaKodesh. Yes, your prayers are getting through and they're really connecting. But you know, there's someone else in the synagogue who his prayers are even on a higher level than yours. They're really coming through. And so what the Arizal, he says, man, I need to meet this man. Uh, I, I, he must be a really great, great person. And I need to learn the secret of his greatness because I want to improve myself. I want to pray on an even higher level. So guess what? The Arizal begins to look for him in the congregation and he finds him. The Holy Spirit shows him, uh, shows, shows to uh, 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 Ravitzak, uh, Luria, this is the man. So he asked him immediately, you know, are you a Torah scholar? And the very ordinary looking villager replied, no. 
he said, what did you do during the days of all? Asked Arizal, and the man replied, Rabbi. He said, I am unlearned and do not even know the complete Aleph Beit. I don't even know the entire alphabet. I know only from Aleph to Yud, and that's the first ten letters. He said, when I saw everyone on, the, on Yom Kippur praying fervently, or during the days of all, excuse me, when I saw everyone during the days of all praying fervently in the synagogue, something that I could not do because I only know the first ten letters, I recited the first ten letters of the Aleph Beit, and I said to God, please, O Master of the Universe, take my letters and form them into words. Mm, wow. Take my letters and form them into words that will please you. He says, and I repeated this all day long. The heartfelt prayer of this ignorant villager meant more in heaven than the lofty prayers of the Arizal himself. Now that's something. A very similar story, as you remember, we talked about the Baal Shem Tov, who was really uh, one of the originators of the Hasidic movement. He says, uh, he tells the story, in Eastern Europe, Jewish farmers who lived far from a synagogue would often go with their families to nearby towns. Well, we don't have time for the story. It's, a, it's the same kind of a story. Uh, how someone just repeated over and over, told God, I don't know how to pray. So they recited the alphabet uh, and asked God to take their letters and put them into the right kind of words. Uh, well, time got away from us on this one, and I'm, you know, kind of sometimes I'm lost in space. I'll tell you what I want to do in the next program. I want to, and it may take us a couple of programs to do it. We want to look in the Talmud at, at a classic passage on the Aleph Beit, uh, the alphabet of Hebrew. And then, soon, very soon, I promise you, very soon, we're going to begin to look at the letters one at a time. First, first we'll do a big overview, and then we'll, then we'll look at one at a time. It's going to be something. I, I, I hope you'll stick with us on it, and I hope you'll be pleased with it, and it will bless you. Shalom uvrakah to you. Thank you for joining us in our study. If you enjoyed this study and are interested in learning more from the Torah and the sages of Israel, then check us out on the Internet at www.bfm101.com, or you may contact us toll-free at 1-800-639-0169. Our mailing address is Biblical Faith, P.O. Box 2, Abilene, Texas, 79604. Until next time, we wish you Shalom Uvakah, peace and a blessing.